Hello, this is Jake Abbott. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about state observers, which some people call state estimators. Um, I feel like the more commonly used term is observers, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, up until this point, in recent videos, we've been talking about using state feedback to, in order to effectively set our closed loop system eigenvalues wherever we want. So we've been talking about systems that, looks, that look like x dot equals ax plus bu and we've said if we make u have a special structure which is we're going to choose u equal to some reference value minus k times x so we have some matrix of gains scalar gains k times our state vector we're going to effectively change our our new have a new system wh whose a matrix looks like a minus bk and we can make that system through choosing k we can make that system have any eigenvalues w that we want but fundamental to this assumption of this controller is that we know the states k that might not be a safe assumption in practice what we really know is we know why for sure we know why our output that's the thing we're sensing that we're going to control but we may not know all of the states. We may know some of the states. So to implement this control scheme, we really need to know our full state vector. So this is what an observer is about. It's, a, it's fundamentally based on this assumption that we don't know the full state vector through sensors, but we do have a model of our system. And is it possible to make this thing called an observer that effectively estimates our states for us so we can plug that estimate into this position here in our controller? So we're not going to know the states exactly through sensors, but we're going to estimate them or observe them. So that's what we're going to do here. So the basic idea of our, of our controller is to do something like this. So we first of all, we start with our plant. And our plant is this thing, which we've been writing uh, with our state space equation. So it has an A matrix inside of it. It has a B matrix inside of it. Um, and it has a state vector at each instant in time that describes it. And to this plant, we provide an input, u, and that's a signal that's varying in time. And out of that plant comes our state vector. And we pass that state vector through a C matrix, and out of that comes our output, y, the signal that's varying in time. And this is the thing we want to control. And so I guess in reality, it's sort of this whole thing this whole thing here is our plant, let's say. So the idea with an observer is we have, we've modeled our system. So we know what A and B are, and we know what C is. Um, we don't know them perfectly. We have estimates of them, but they're accurate estimates. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a simulation. So this is a simulation that's going to run, you know, in a computer, let's say, in code. And we're going to use our estimate of a, which I'm going to put a, a hat to show it's not a it's not a perfect it's not a perfect estimate of a. It's but we're going to assume it's very close. Our estimate of b, and then we're going to have our an estimate of our states. So I'll call that x hat at any instant in time. And out of that, and what we're going to do is we're going to run this simulation that's going to have these estimates of a and b, and we're going to feed it our actual control input. So whatever signal we actually give to our real plant, like a voltage or something, we give that same signal to our simulation and we watch our simulation evolve in parallel and so we're going to have these estimated states x hat and we're going to pass those through our estimate of c and out of that is going to come our estimate of y and so this again this whole thing here is a simulation including y hat is also the output of a simulation and it's this it's this simulation that is the observer so the observer is this, this thing, this software simulation that you run in parallel with your real physical system. You give that simulation whatever input you're giving your, your physical system, and it spits out a simulated output that you would hope would be very close to the output of your real system. So, you know, in practice, to, to implement this thing, you're, you're going to implement a, a state space equation of this hat form. So you're going to implement something like this. Um, you're going you're gonna to simulate these differential equations using functions in MATLAB, such as LSIM, let's say. So, um, or using any other, you know, differential equation solver, but that's an example using MATLAB. So, <clears throat> we have this, this idea that we have this 
observer, and this is what we call an open loop observer, because um, there's no feedback term at all. We just basically have this system running in parallel with our physical system, but if that system gets wrong, there's nothing that is there to sort of correct it. <clears throat> so you can see this system would work perfectly if our estimate of A was perfect, our estimate of B was perfect, our estimate of C was perfect, and our initial guess of our state was perfect. So, you know, if in the event that x hat naught is equal to the actual x hat, then if we had a perfect model, then these two y and y hats would evolve perfectly, identically equal for all time. And the thing that's cool about the observer, right, is we, unlike the real system, in the real system we have access to this y here, but we don't have access to the states. In our simulation, we have access to everything because it's it's all just in code. So we can we can ping y hat if we want, but we can also get access to x hat. So we can go and then use that in our controller. This would be the idea, so we'd close our controller like u equals r minus k x hat. Our real physical, our real physical controller would use our estimate of our states. The problem is this open loop observer isn't going to work very well. First of all, in the event A is unstable, it's not even an option. Remember that's a possibility that our 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 A matrix could be unstable. Part of the reason why we do control is to is to is to potentially stabilize an unstable system. So in the event the original A matrix is unstable, you can't even run this simulation because of what you've effectively done here is you've simulated an unstable system and when you give that unstable system an input, you're going to have you're going to have terms grow to infinity. Um, and and it's just going to be a very poorly conditioned numerical simulation. So if it's unstable, you can't even do it at all. But let's say A is stable, our original A matrix is stable, we just want to change it to have different properties, different time response properties. Well, so A hat in this case is going to be stable, so this simulation will work, but the problem is um, errors between A and A hat are going to grow over time, and you'll never be able to correct for those things. Um, now, one thing that's kind of nice is the as long as A and A hat are relatively close to each other, uh, and and they're stable, eventually the the effects of the initial condition die away after some amount of time constants. And then and then you're basically just seeing the forced response of these systems. So if A and A hat are close to each other and you're giving them the same U, your your Ys, if your A's are, are, are stable, your Ys might actually look relatively close to each other. But there are going to be errors that are just sort of always there and you're never going to correct for them. And so this is not going to be something, this open loop observer is not going to be something we're going to want to do in practice. Um, and, and part of it is just that it's kind of stupid because it's not fully using all of the information you have. The fact of the matter is here, we do know what Y is. We're watching it with a sensor. And so if we see that our open loop observer's Y hat is different than Y, to not take advantage of that information is sort of throwing away really useful information. So so to, to make an observer smarter, we're going to make a closed loop observer in which we're going to do something very similar to this, but if y hat and y aren't the same as each other, we want to somehow use that information and push our estimate of our states in the right direction. Cause, because, I mean, if this was a perfect observer, then y and y hat would be equal to each other all of the time. So, <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to make this closed loop observer and we're going to change the governing equation. So in the closed loop observer, we're going to implement something like this. We're going to implement effectively what was our open loop observer. So we're going to have our simulated a x a hat x hat, and we're going to have our plus b u term. But now what we're going to do is we're going to add an additional term. This is a feedback gain matrix L that's very similar to our gain matrix K in our state feedback, and we're going to pass through that the term y minus y hat. So we've effectively taken our open loop observer and we've added an error based term in y hat in between y and y hat. So that's encapsulated here. And you can sort of think of dimensions here to see what shape L would have. So x is an n by 1 vector, so is x dot, a is n by n, right? So all of these things have to be n by 1 things. This y and y hat, we're talking about scalars at this point, so this is a one by one thing. So L is an n by one vector, so you can think of L looking like um, little L1, L2, all the way down to Ln, and these are real numbers. So if we implement this, this, this closed loop observer, 
And we acknowledge that, well, Y is something we measure, but Y hat is something we just explicitly calculate in our simulation like this. Then I can go through and I can regroup L and C hat and I can bring this X hat term over with this X hat term and what I'm going to get is I've effectively by implementing this closed loop observer I'll get a new system that looks like A minus LC X hat plus BU plus LY. So what we have is we have a new system that now has two inputs. Not only does it have not only does it have um, our input U, but it has our which is which is our real controller input that's going to our simulation, but it also has the output of our real system. So the sensor from your real system is an input to your observer. The cool thing about this is this form looks a lot like our A minus B K term. And we found if the pair A B was controllable, then we could, through the choice of K, we could make this new matrix A minus B K have any eigenvalues we wanted. So we could control the stability and the time response of our state feedback. Well, this is a dual problem, and it turns out that if the pair A C is observable, then we can use this gain matrix L to make this system have any eigenvalues we want. But AC has to be observable. So the same sort of result that we saw with the stability, this really great stability result with state feedback, we see the same sort of result with this closed loop observer. That we make this observer and we can make its observer have any dynamic properties that we want. So we're going to create this system it's going to evolve in time and this is the actual system that we're going to simulate now so we're going to simulate this system so you know when you actually physically build your simulation this equation is what you're going to simulate so um, you're going to you're actually going to implement this this final a matrix you're not going to implement the the sub the sub a matrices sorry I don't have all my hats here so <clears throat> Let's look at the benefits of this open loop observer. So I've now, you know, sort of established I can make my my closed loop observer have any eigenvalues I want, but I haven't really proven that that's particularly useful. So let's consider a new variable, error. And we're going to call this error by definition. An error is something that evolves in time. We're going to define that as our difference between our actual state vector and our estimated state vector. So really, if we had a perfect observer, a perfect observer would be an observer that's defined by error equals zero for all time. So we've always got a perfect estimate of our states. And you can tell we want this error to be as small as possible. And ideally, we'd like it if that error exists at the beginning of the simulation. As time goes on, at least it sort of decays away to zero. We're going to find that's exactly the result we get we can take the time derivative of this too and we can just put a dot on each of these things so this is also going to hold so let's explicitly expand that out so here's an equation for error dot we can plug in our our x dot which looks like ax minus bu and let's let's go with the assumption right now that our estimates are very good so we have a hat is basically approximately equal to a and b hat is approximately equal to b and same with c <clears throat> so if I now do that, if I come in and I plug this equation here for x dot x hat dot here, I'm just going to get minus and a minus lc x hat, and I'm going to get a minus bu, and I'm going to get a minus y, and I'm going to sort of acknowledge to myself that um, let's see. I want to kind of acknowledge that that y is really just equal to c times x. So what else can I plug in here? I have an ax, a I have a b, u. And so then I can start breaking this up. I can distribute this x hat to this a and to this lc, and I can start pulling terms together. So I can pull this ax over here, and I can group the x hat terms. And when I do that, what I'm going to get 
is I'm going to get something that looks like an a times x minus x hat and then I'm going to get a plus lc times a term that looks like x hat minus x and then I group these things and I get an a minus lc times this quantity x minus x hat but that x minus x hat is just error and so the result is I get an equation that looks like error dot equals a minus lc error. So I've effectively, by using this closed loop observer, I have made a system that looks like an unforced system, right? E dot equals some AE plus there's no BU. It's a completely unforced system. So if I can make these eigenvalues be whatever I want, I can make them stable and I can make them whatever time constants I want, I can make this error, which is the difference between my state estimate and the actual state, I can make that error go away to zero in a known time, in a very stable, known way. So no matter what initial error I have in my observer, I know exactly how long it will take until that error is gone. And from that moment on, my observer is essentially perfect. For all intents and purposes, it's perfect. So I've, 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 I've solved my problem. And after a certain amount of time, I know that my estimates uh, x hat are, are essentially equal to x. Now, to make this work um, <clears throat> with this really, really beautiful result, it really hinged on this, that my estimates of a, b, and c are all basically perfect. If those estimates are a little bit off, it will effectively act like a disturbance. Um, so this, this result won't hold perfectly, but what you'll find is that the system is robust to these little disturbances. So um, even though your model isn't perfect, you're still going to have state estimates that look very good and very close to the actual system. So um, let's see, to conclude, if our system AC is observable, then we can assign the eigenvalues of A minus LC arbitrarily using this gain matrix L. The, the method to choose the L values is something that is explicitly given in the text, but it's analogous to the way that you would choose the K values in an A minus BK matrix. And um, just like with choosing the state, uh, the K values in the state feedback method, choosing the L values in the state observer method is not a completely straightforward task. I mean, you can ask yourself, uh, shouldn't I just make them stable and as fast as possible? And that seems good on, at first, but there are consequences to trying making things too fast. Uh, it turns out this is the subject of what's known as the Kalman filter. It's something we'll talk about in the near future. And so the Kalman filter, um, I'll give you a preview. A Kalman filter is really nothing more than a state observer. It looks exactly like what we've just been discussing. But in a Kalman filter, the L, the L values are chosen in a very specific way that's based on the noise in your sensors. So there's sort of an optimal L based on how noisy your signals are. And so that's what the topic of the Kalman filter will be.